Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing. I believe it's Dwyer Boxing and Sports News or something like that. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about a fight that I think is mispriced by Las Vegas. Right. Keep in mind, this isn't really a boxing website. It's a gambling website. We're trying to beat the casino. Right. Let's talk about a possibly mispriced fight. Right now, Eddie Chambers, a guy I respect a great deal, is a three-to-one favorite over Thabiso Machunu. Right. I have a problem with that line. Let's talk about why. You know. A lot of times we get obsessed with the fighters, right? Their styles. Styles do make fights. And we forget about the bigger picture, the weights. That's a huge factor in handicapping fights, right? A guy can rule the roost at a certain weight. Let's consider it his house, right? But when he moves into another weight class, let's call that a different neighborhood. That guy's comparative advantage can fall apart. Right? So you should always be careful in handicapping fights. When you hear of a good matchup and then realize that one of the guys is fighting outside of his weight class. Right? Size matters a great deal now one of the things that I've learned is that when a fighter gets older and by older it's a young man's game folks when you're 29 30 31 right when you're in the age range of Andre Berto and Eddie Chambers in my opinion, it is asking too much to have you then decide to make a lifestyle change and to lose weight to fight at a lower weight class. Many great fighters have tried it. Many have failed. One of the absolute best fighters I've ever seen. In fact, I consider him to be the fighter of the 1990s, right? This guy at his prime, arguably, had a bigger gap between himself and everyone else than really anyone else I've seen. And that was Roy Jones Jr. We forget how dominant Roy was, right? At one point, the only loss he had was he knocked a guy to the canvas, Montel Griffin. And then while the guy was on the canvas, Roy Jones threw an extra punch, got disqualified in the fight. That's the only fight he lost for a long time, folks, right? And also, you know, people like to say Roy didn't fight anyone. Roy fought young Bernard Hopkins. Roy fought Virgil Hill. Roy fought Mike McCallum. Trust me, if you're of a certain age, you know these were big names. Roy fought James Tony when James Tony was unbeaten. Right? Jones, quite frankly, just made it look like a mismatch. He was fighting quality opponents. He was just lapping the field. He was, in a sense, like Usain Bolt is today. You're looking at an Olympic final. He beats the field handily, and you say, wow. The caliber of the competition, were they really that good? And then you have to pinch yourself and remember you were watching the Olympic Games, right? Well, Roy Jones was spectacular. Then Roy Jones decided to gain weight. He gained weight to heavyweight. He had a long-time dream of being heavyweight champion of the world. And he was magnificent as a heavyweight. Right? When you gain weight, those first couple of fights in your next weight class, especially when you were into fitness, like Roy Jones was in his prime, you're going to retain 
the hand speed of the lower weight, right? Your opponent is not going to be prepared for the hand speed that a light heavyweight is bringing into the ring at heavyweight, right? John Ruiz wasn't prepared for it. Roy Jones took the heavyweight title. It's one of the more meaningful fights of our time. Then the problem set in. Roy Jones decided to lose weight to get back down to light heavy to fight Antonio Tarver. Longtime viewers of the sport, I'm sure, agree that Roy Jones was never the same after that. If you want to see the last fight, when Roy Jones was Roy Jones, you need to look at Roy Jones' fight against John Ruiz because when he loses the weight, he looks sluggish. He was never able to recover. His body was never able to give him back what he had. Right? That's a trend for older fighters who gain weight and then try to lose weight. Right? It's particularly true. For guys who are in one division and then decide to lose weight to fight at the lighter division. I know common sense tells us that, you know, a bigger man should beat a good little man, right? That's a boxing truism, right? A big, a good big man beats a good little man. That's a slogan, rather, in boxing. So guys like Chris Bird, Slick. Too fast for most heavyweights. Former heavyweight champion, right? Gave Vitali Klitschko a loss, right? You remember Vitali threw out his shoulder fighting Chris Bird, right? I believe Vitali's only other loss is to Lennox Lewis, right? Chris Bird at heavyweight was very difficult to handle. You would have to be completely outside the box, like Ike Ibeabuchi was back in the day, to beat him. But then late in his career, Chris Bird, who was never big for a heavyweight, decided to lose weight, decided to fight at cruiserweight. I'll tell you what, you look at the record. Chris Bird wasn't Chris Bird, right? I'm just telling you, when you stay in your house, in your weight class, and you try to move to a new neighborhood, you're courting disaster. When you're an older fighter and you're trying to lose weight, it's different if you're gaining weight. But when you're trying to lose weight, right, I believe your body betrays you in the later rounds. Let me go further. Guys who lose weight before a fight, go back and look at the guys who've been killed in the ring. You're going to find that many of them lost a lot of weight to make weight before the fight, right? Your body, quite frankly, pays you back when you drain the body and you're in your 30s, right? When you drain the body unnaturally, I'm just telling you, you're more susceptible to dehydration. You're more susceptible to serious injury. Your body might look great, but it's not in the shape you think it is. Now, Eddie Chambers is a heavyweight. I understand he's been outweighed by some of his opponents by big amounts, right? Vladimir Klitschko, much bigger physically than Eddie Chambers. But understand, Eddie Chambers is a heavyweight. That's what his body is accustomed to. That's where he's been. He hasn't been moonlighting at heavyweight. He's not David Hay years ago, who was a cruiserweight, gained some weight, fought Tomas Bonin, then dropped back down a cruiser, right? He's not that guy, right? He's also not Floyd Mayweather. Understand, Floyd Mayweather really weighs about 147 pounds, 147 to 150. When Floyd fought... Oscar De La Hoya for Oscar's belt at 154. You know what? Floyd came in weighing about 150 pounds for the fight. Right? Floyd didn't gain the weight. Right? That's the right way to do it. But that's not Eddie Chambers. Eddie Chambers has been a heavyweight. 
right? He hasn't been a heavyweight fighting at cruiser. He's been a heavyweight. So now you're telling me that at 31 years old, Eddie Chambers is going to just now decide that he's going to fight at cruiserweight? Eddie, you need to rethink this one right now. Vegas has him as a 3-1 to one favorite. I'm just here to tell you that his opponent, whose nickname is The Rock, is the real deal. This guy is dangerous. I want you to think about what Adrian Broner would look like at cruiserweight. That's who this guy is. And in some ways, quite frankly, this guy is even better than Broner in some things. Understand this guy doesn't stand right in front of you trying to catch everything on his forearms. This guy's shorter. He bends at the waist. He's off at the side. He carries a big punch. Look into his background. Former Olympian. I believe he won the bronze medal. Former Commonwealth Games. I believe he medaled there as well. He did lose one fight. But understand the guy he lost the fight to, Zach McKessa, is really an Andre Berto type of explosive episodic fighter. In other words, not defensively gifted, right? Not a guy who is going to outbox you for 12 rounds but a guy with the kind of episodic explosive punching power where one punch is all it takes. Also understand too that the one guy who knocked out the rock, right, that one guy is 5'9". Heights matter. Just like weights matter, heights matter. He's 5'9". So the rock being shorter wouldn't phase him as much as it's going to phase 6'1 Eddie Chambers, right? In other words, think Joe Fraser. Joe Fraser's lack of height wouldn't be an issue against Dwight Cowie, right? Because Dwight Cowie is also shorter. But it was a big issue to Muhammad Ali because Fraser was able to get under Ali, right? That's the dynamic in this fight. Did I mention, too, that The Rock hits like a Mack truck, right? This is a dangerous fight for Eddie Chambers, especially since it's not even in Eddie's house. It's not at heavyweight, folks. This is at cruiserweight. So to me, given these odds, I like The Rock, the two and a half to one underdog to win the fight hedged with Eddie Chambers by decision, right? Eddie's not a knockout puncher. Don't view this as a heavyweight with a big punch fighting a cruiserweight. In fact, Eddie's not even the, the puncher in this fight. Let's throw out another dynamic. Eddie Chambers has a really nice jab. Guess what? The Rock's a southpaw, right? Comes in at angles. I believe Eddie is going to have a hard time landing that jab. Not only that, The Rock, as I said, fights like Adrian Broner. He fights out of a Philly shell. He keeps his right elbow up. Because he doesn't have a long neck, he's able to hide his head behind his elbow, just like I am in this video. So this is a very tough fight especially when you're going to have to lose weight to make weight in it and you're in your 30s, right? Understand young guys, Canelo, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. when he was in his 20s, when you're in your mid-20s, your body's like a rubber band. You can do crazy things like gain 15 pounds, 20 pounds after a weigh-in and make, you know, weight, Right, the uh, you know, at the way in. In your 30s, it's not that easy. You're going to tell me that Eddie Chambers in his 30s is now going to lose weight 
and is going to fight a tough opponent who's hard to hit as it is, who hits harder than him. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm one of those suckers who's going to take the leverage here that the casino is giving me. Because they're giving me two and a half to one odds on the underdog, sign me up. I'm taking the underdog in this fight, but I'm going to hedge it with Chambers by decision. I don't expect Eddie Chambers to get a knockout. Right? So I'm going to take my chances, even though The Rock has been stopped in the past. Keep an eye on this Cruiserweight fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.